No. It's in here somewhere. It's gotta be. An old basketball sweatshirt from middle school. My mom always kept them. She still fit into them. What year do you think that is? Or how old are you? Is that one single tooth sticking out? Yeah, maybe about one. Penobscot boy culturally appropriating Western Plains regalia. Super, super uh, cool thing to do. A couple of my mom's million journals. She was really good at keeping diaries, but only starting them. And so she has a lot of them that are just started and not finished. Um, which are nice because still I get to read stuff that she's written, even though she's gone. Oh, this is my uh, favorite thing. Mom, tell me one more story. Your story of raising me. You were a pain in the ass. No. Um, to Morgan James Tall. Dude, this was nice. I remember my first birthday without her. I read this. And like her journal, she didn't finish the whole book, but there was plenty here that, that it was nice to read. I feel like she's still here saying something. Even though she's not. I have no idea where it is. Spirit probably took it. You believe in spirits? If you don't, I got I got a good one for you. When I was about 11 or 12, my mom and I came home one day to our house on the Penobscot Nation. When we went inside, we were hit with a stench so rotten I can only describe it as evil. And mom goes, Jesus Christ, what is that? She set her keys and purse on the table, but didn't take off her jacket or her shoes, which really tells you how bad that smell was. Mom made sure no shoes ever touched the linoleum. And as I followed her down the hallway holding my breath, the smell just got stronger until finally we stopped right in front of mom's door. I'm terrified at this point because whatever the source of this otherworldly stench is, it's on the other side of this door. I can't quite remember the exact events that followed. The smell was so potent that it wiped it from my memory. But what I am sure of is that on mom's bed, right on top of her quilted blanket, was a single square of single ply toilet paper, on top of which rested a turd. Now, you're going to say, I can't believe someone broke into these people's home and took a crap on their bed. Or, I can't believe that a pet would be courteous enough to use a piece of toilet paper. But listen, all the doors were dead bolted. The windows were locked. My mom's bedroom door was closed. And our dog would never be as neat as that. I couldn't wrap my head around the logistics of it myself. But to mom, who had insisted before that there was another presence in the house, the answer was clear. This was a piece of work from the other side. And given the lack of evidence to prove otherwise, why wouldn't I believe her? Hey Morgan, sorry if I sound weird, but I just want to know if you ever thought your old house was haunted. My boyfriend and I keep having dreams about the bathroom. Even before we moved in, I had a dream that we couldn't live here. I just want to know if it's, if it's just us or what. And these are the people who moved in when we left, and I didn't tell them about the turd, but I told them about the knocking. It started with light tapping on walls, on doors. Over time, though, the light taps turned into knocks, and the knocks started to get more persistent and louder. My mom and her boyfriend Rick had smudged the house, attempting to cleanse it or make the bad energy go away, but it didn't help. Things got worse. The light knocks turned into bangs. They followed us sometimes as we walked up and down the hallway. Mom called them gugooks or spirits. They were different from pugwidgees or mecumwests, as we call them. Little people's spirits who steal objects. Whenever something went missing, Mom would say it was the goddamn pugwidgees. But they always returned what they took, and so she was never worried. But the gugooks, the gugooks, they were a different thing. They could be good or they could be bad. These ones seemed bad, and my mother was worried about them. Eventually, the banging got so loud that mom broke down and cried in the bathroom, and all night the walls shook. The next day, that's when she called the priest. I 
I've asked you to believe a lot of things, and I'm asking you to believe just one more. When the priest walked through the door, I swear to God, every single clock in that house just stopped. He held his cross above his head and said, Something is not right in this house, my children. And as he closed his eyes to pray, something like a hand, or the shadow of a hand, appeared from a dark gray mist that hadn't been there before. Oh, it's so hard to even talk about it. A hand came out and grabbed him right by the throat and just bashed his head one, two, three, four times into the wall until his head just exploded. And there was really nothing left of him. And we knew right then that we were in some serious, serious trouble. No, how it really happened was he, so he came in, he had his little Bible and his little holy water, and he just went and walked around the house and said some prayers and he splashed water everywhere um, with no regard for outlets or electricity and our house was soaked by the time he left but i will say but the banging stopped some point after that and i'm not going to say it was because of the priest's visit um i'm going to just maybe say it was coincidental but who knows you can believe whichever version you can believe whichever conclusion you know you can draw from this series of events hello hey what are you doing i got a uh, i got a guy here who doesn't believe our house was haunted okay i've been hearing ghost stories ever since i was little from my mother think about it do you really believe Grammy's house, all those knots on the walls were just air in the, in the pipes. No. <laughs> I really don't think they were. If we believe in all of this stuff, what do you think, what do you think they want? You know how, like, in all the movies, they just want to find their way back home or across the other side. It might not be the other side, but they're unsettled. And so they, they just want attention. And that's how they get it. Has mommy visited you at all? Not yet, just in dreams. But I'm shocked she hasn't because she swore she was going to haunt me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wish she would. <laughs> I know. When she died, I spent so much time going through her belongings, looking for something that would tell me where she went. Mom was always good like that, letting you know where she was. I couldn't believe that Mom would just up and depart this world without saying something, even if her departure was out of her hands. Leaving without a word was not in her nature. But the more I looked, the more I lost faith. And so I stopped, thinking that maybe she didn't leave anything behind because she intended on returning, in some way, to say hello, maybe by knocking on a wall or two. But nothing made a sound in our home. I reasoned then that her silence was telling me to go back to searching, and so I did. I was yet again in her belongings, this time in one of her purses that I knew I looked in before, when I found the Ziploc bag. Goddamn Pugwidgees, Mom would say. This is it. So this is what I found after looking for so long. In the bag, she had placed her dark black hair, a sacred part of the body in our culture as well as a note which read, wrote this in 2013 for my firstborn girl and my secondborn boy son. Don't know if I'll be cremated or buried, but please bury me in our family plot area. I wanted to leave something still alive, so I left my hair. I believe that I will always walk beside you children, so believe that as well. Speak to me often because I will hear you. Don't let this be creepy. I'm teaching the both of you some of my spiritual ways. Love to you both, Mom. Speak to me often, Mom said, because I will hear you. Recalling the terror we experienced long ago, I wonder, is that something they wanted? To be acknowledged? Were we failing to say hello? What would have happened if we knocked back? <laughs> 